Hey everyone, this is Dan from TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Once again, that website address is TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. We got asked a fantastic question today by someone named Lisa. And uh, I won't mention her last name. Maybe she doesn't want it to be uh, uh, put out there. But Lisa asked a fantastic question. And I'm going to try to do my best to answer the question in, in this video. And hopefully Don can do one later on. Uh, basically, what she's asking is, um, you know, she's in the process of doing research in clinical trials, and um, she ran across her website. Now, she understands that that typically the drug companies hire the research clinics to conduct clinical trials. Uh, that is true. That's how research is done, like most of the time. Um, however, she was curious if trials are ever run and are financed by independent research scientists who don't work for big pharmaceutical companies. So an example of this would be some research scientist thinks he's found the cure for cancer. Um, you know, how can he actually do a clinical trial uh, to see if, 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 if his uh, theory actually is true? And, um, you know, does he approach the clinic? Does he approach a drug company? What does he do? And, um, and then I'll get into the second part of her question. Basically, in cases like this, um, if some scientist thinks he may have found a cure and, and would like to do a clinical trial, more often than not, he's affiliated with a university. For the most part, he's probably affiliated with some academic institution. Um, these type of institutions, like universities and nonprofits, they get grants from the federal government to conduct clinical trials. And it's usually through the National Institutes of Health, or the NIH, where they get grants and they get awarded. So if some researcher has a theory and he wants to do a, a clinical trial on it, he submits a grant proposal, and that goes through the process, usually through the university, um, and it definitely will go through the NIH. And then those, those kind of trials are usually federally funded. Now, if you want to approach... A pharmaceutical company, sometimes you got to approach the, uh, the big drug companies to see if maybe there's a potential partnership there. And the same thing, it'll run through the NIH, it'll be federally funded. Um, they would generally need to partner with either a university or a big pharmaceutical company or both because they may have the theory and, and, and they may have the, um, the cure for whatever they're looking for or the better treatment but they don't have access to the patient population to actually conduct the clinical trials. So that's where they would partner with uh, either a university. If they're not already working there, a university, 90% of the time they're affiliated with universities, and then it would go through the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, um, for the federally funded trials. You can also partner with the drug companies. They also partner with universities very often to um, actually get federally funded grants for their, uh, pro for their particular projects. So that's usually how it works. Check out the NIH and um, you know, basically your academic institutions will have, they're, they're, they're working on, on these kind of trials all the time. Um, her next question was, are there any instances where a phase one trial would be done with volunteers who are not healthy? Because if you remember, we talk about phase one studies are primarily for healthy volunteers. So yes. Um, with two specific medical indications. One is for psychiatry and the other is for cancer. So oftentimes for psychiatry trials and for cancer trials or for oncology trials, phase one studies are conducted uh, not on healthy people or healthy volunteers, but people who actually suffer from the medical condition. Um, other than that though, for the most part, they are for healthy volunteers with the exception of psychiatry and cancer. And for cancer, I, I understand why. And um, for psychiatry, um, you can probably make some assumptions and, and guesses. I, I won't get into that right now. Uh, but for oncology, certainly, they're trying to oftentimes uh, save people's lives right away. And sometimes a clinical trial is the only alternative. And it's they need to be immediate and they need to act quickly. So Phase 1 studies have been approved for oncology trials, as well as psychiatry. Hopefully this helps. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions, 
and we'll try to get Don to kind of make a video response to this question as well. Thanks a lot, Lisa, and this is Dan from TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Thanks a lot.